So, uh, good evening. Uh, so, I will present today what would he do for if conversion for a partially predicated VLIW architecture using the GCC framework of if conversion. <clears throat> so, uh, this work is done at Carray. Carray is a company manufacturing uh, data processing uh, unit, which are uh, uh, processor used in IO acceleration, edge computing, and uh, autonomous uh, vehicle driving. So it's a company funded in uh, 2008, and we have 200 people today. So I will present uh, what we have in the processor, and more importantly, the core, which is a, a modern VLIW architecture. Then uh, I will uh, go quickly over what we did to have a GCC deliver excellent results on that uh, instruction set architecture. Then I will uh, explain more, summarize what is existing uh, if conversion framework of GCC, then the uh, extension we did for our architecture, and, and then uh, first results and uh, what we will do next. So the processor we manufacture, uh, you can see on, on those ones, this, this is a, a, a board that goes into a, a server for IO acceleration, especially so, solid stage uh, storage management. <clears throat> this processor, in fact, is a complex uh, system on chip. It contains uh, 80 application cores. Each application core has, has a deep learning coprocessor tightly coupled to it. I will not discuss the tightly coupled coprocessor, but GCC is also excellent to uh, manage the resources of this uh, deep learning coprocessor. <clears throat> the, the five, uh, uh, the, the 80 cores are dispatched into uh, five uh, compute units that we call clusters. So each compute unit has uh, 16 application core and 16 uh, coprocessor. And so I will uh, discuss what we do for the core itself. Uh, the, the system is running uh, between 600 and 1.2 gigahertz, and this is our third generation, generation C of MPPA, the line of a uh, massive par parallel architecture of Calray, and it's MPPA V1 college. To explain a little bit more, and after we go into the details, we've been manufacturing many core processors for several years. <clears throat> And we are currently in the blue box, so we're using a 16 nanometer node, and uh, we uh, iterate, uh, we, we sell this uh, processor that I will present, and we are currently taping out a, a, an iteration of it with a significant improvement in deep learning in particular. So uh, it's uh, all those uh, cores are based on the v, uh, VLIW, very long instruction world architecture, so it's an uh, I think everyone is familiar with uh, what is a VLW. <clears throat> so it's a basically compiler-driven uh, extraction and exploitation of instruction-level parallelism. So the compiler will have to find a group of parallel instructions. So it's a good choice for some class of, of application, especially uh, acceleration, because it's uh, simple to uh, implement, energy efficient, Time predictable, this matters when you do uh, some kind of automated uh, driving, and, uh, so, and implementation is, uh, is uh, easier. But it's in interesting and important to know that there are two families of VLIW which are not the same, and often they are, they are confused. So there is a classic uh, VLIW architecture by Josh Fisher uh, in uh, 79 and uh, 81. And then later, there is the EPIC VLIW architecture from uh, Bob Rowe team. And uh, the VLIW architecture eventually uh, uh, became the Play Doh architecture and the IS64 architecture. Uh, the VLIW architecture, the classic one, uh, started in Trust uh, Machines. Then uh, Josh Fisher went to uh, East Coast uh, HP Labs and he refined the uh, classic VLIW for embedded and media processing. This kind of VLIW was used in particular uh, at ST Microelectronics, and, and, and I work on this architecture and on its uh, tools. So when we uh, founded Carre, we found the benefits of a Fisher-style uh, VLIW architecture, but also we saw the shortcomings of the one provided by ST Micro that was the ST200, but known as the LX VLIW architecture. So the key uh, feature is that in the classic VLIW architecture, 
you only have partial predication, as that will be the topic today. That is, if you want to do a conditional execution of some operation, you can only do that on a select between register values or conditional load, conditional stores, and on the latest trace machine on a conditional uh, floating point operation. On an EPIC machine, uh, all the instruction set is uh, fully predicated, and th this idea has been uh, uh, continued in more modern implementation of uh, EPIC style VLIW, in particular uh, the TIC6 uh, line of DSP, which have the full predication, the rotating register. But our, our talk is more for classic VLIW architecture. Now, of course, we don't do just classic, we try to improve things. So, how can we improve over a classic VLIW architecture? Because we are talking of compiler here, and, and the main objective of, of a carry architecture design was to have a machine which is very easy to compile. We don't need very exotic comp compiler unlike IS64 machines. So um, uh, one thing would be when you compile for that machine, you don't have to uh, think about uh, building uh, VLIW templates, which is a, a, a quite a messy uh, part of the compilers. So in this machine, the uh, uh, pipeline execution resources are such that every time the, the scheduler decides you can issue those instructions in parallel, they will encode as is and form a valid bundle. So you just have to put in the assembler a marker saying this is the end of my a group of parallel instructions according to the scheduler, and that will make uh, instruction bundle. Another improvement we have, of course, is that we don't have to pad no ops everywhere. This is uh, no longer uh, useful on, on, on modern GLIW. So the comp compilation is quite uh, straightforward, just uh, like for in order core. But then we improve over classic VLIW, we have a vector scalar uh, instruction set architecture, meaning that all uh, Boolean, address, integer, CMD, vectors, they are held in the same general purpose register file. And when you have a wide operance, you use a pair or quadruple of registers. It turns out that uh, uh, GCC is excellent as a, uh, in allocating for such register files. So we have a between, so it's a basically a 64 bit architecture, but we have a 128 and 256 uh, uh, operands with register pair and quadruples. This machine has to be uh, good in uh, DSP, that is a numerical image uh, signal processing and not counting the deep learning, which is uh, uh, taken care of by, by the coprocessor that we see on uh, this part of, of the picture. Uh, other things that we added uh, for, for compiling for high performance, so we have the hardware loop, but that, that's a classic thing. We have the non-temporal loads. So in fact, it's a non-temporal memory access is that when you instruct the compiler to bypass some level of the memory hierarchy and this prevent cache turbulence. If you want to load with re re reuse or do not have a, a dense uh, access patterns, you don't want the cache to bring a lot of uh, useless data. So you want to uh, do a cache bypass <coughs> load. And also because it's a classic VLIW, we want uh, non-trapping load so we can decide to uh, control speculate load in advance in while loop, for instance, and if, we, if the address goes in the IO space or does meme, uh, uh, other uh, faults, it will just return zero. And uh, it's very capable for CPU capabilities. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we support Linux or the PIC model or the, or the TLS models. And moreover, we are fully uh, recursive uh, uh, virtualization of IZ. So any kind of software can run at any privilege level and you cannot see that in other uh, architecture. So <clears throat> the code generation part, uh, we have a, a tool chain and it's uh, mostly built out of uh, open source and free software uh, components. So the main part are, are the, uh, of course, uh, uh, compiler, linker, uh, binary utilities, libc, and, and debugger, etc. So we have mainly GCC, Linux, and we also have LLVM. So we have LLVM because we have a complete uh, uh, chain of uh, open CL where we have the uh, Bogle framework relying on the LLVM and passing the conformance. But we are going to talk about uh, the, the GCC port, even though we have a parallel port with LLVM <coughs> for this VLIW. So w w when we have this uh, architecture to co compile for in GCC, uh, we do the classic uh, stuff for GCC, which is very uh, 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 capable. So we map the hardware loop with uh, dual patterns. This is classic. Uh, 
we uh, push the last scheduling phase very late in the compilation in the RTL flow, so it sees the whole expansion of all the uh, instruction and creates the schedule, which, which is the, bu the bundle of the instruction. So we don't want to, to mess with instruction just uh, after that. And uh, all the classic optimization uh, of uh, GCC, they work. So here uh, we see an example of a very simple loop where we enable uh, tree vectorization. And in order to make the code uh, easy to read, we uh, do, don't do O3, so it doesn't do a massive unrolling and pipelining of the inner loop. But what you can see in this loop, it's very simple. It's mapping the hardware loop. It's loading the, the two input streams. So it load, it's loading 256 uh, bits, that is eight float values at a time. You see the result go into uh, register quadruples. We also have an addressing mode, which is index of index. So it's not uh, just simple uh, risk uh, like addressing mode. We have addressing mode, which can be register plus register or register plus register scale by the uh, item size. Then you have a dual issuing of uh, the floating point uh, add word. So we uh, do a quadruple floating point add here. And because uh, we, we operate on the, on, the, on the eight values, the compiler has decomposed the vector instruction into two uh, uh, parallel instructions, which uh, must issue a, dif a different clock cycle. Then we store the results and the increment. Um, the, the, the pointer. So you see it's very simple uh, to compile. Uh, and I should mention the double colon is the end of a parallel group as seen by the scheduler, which is the same as the end of instruction bundle. Uh, so in order to deal with the uh, uh, advanced, uh, with the uh, uh, non-trapping loads and the non-temporal loads, that is a level one cache bypass load. We, we leverage the uh, GCC support for the name address space. So it was a proposed extension for DSP uh, uh, machines. And it's very useful. It's been used in some target of GCC for uh, different uh, hardware address spaces. Here, it's a, we, are, we have a single address space, but we just annotate the pointer we want this to be in cache or to bypass cache or to be non-trapping or to do both, which we call them uh, streaming loads. It's non-trapping and bypass level one uh, cache. It's very useful for, for deep vector loops. And you see all the difference. So here we have an addressing mode where we scale this uh, index by the item size. And then um, we, uh, we have, uh, that's the only modifier. We bypass level one, it means uncache. Here we, uh, we, uh, we bypass the cache and we are in a silent or non-trapping mode and here we're in non-trapping mode. So all that done by uh, name address space, but because we don't have them in C++, uh, we had to introduce uh, uh, built-ins uh, in case you have to use C++, which is an inconvenience. On LLVM, we can have this working in C++. Now, uh, a key part is the vector scalar architecture. So first, uh, we rely on, on all the uh, GCC machinery. Uh, then, because we have the vector scalar, the vector are maintained into a tuple of register. We must pass them around. And we have a slight uh, things to, to do at the ABI level, because at the ABI level, we pass in 12 register, can be misaligned with regard to the register pair or quadruple. So we just have to adjust for that. And then uh, this code illustrates, you do a simple add of eight floats, and you see that it with a Scala, and the Scala will be first converted into uh, one word, which is, uh, then co contains a duplicated FP32, and then this word is become a, a vector, and the vector is operated just like in the previous loop. Another trick we have, which was found very helpful with this architecture, we implemented the bit matrix multiply operation that was uh, introduced in the uh, Cray YMPs, and then uh, at uh, Princeton University 10 years ago, uh, Ribilly and Hillewitz demonstrated all the wide use of that kind of arithmetic, and uh, it's very useful. In particular, we use it for all the shuffling, splatting, and inserting, and merging of vectors. And, and then uh, we found also something that with a vector scalar, if you let uh, the vector operation decompose into elementary 64-bit uh, operation, then register uh, pre-pass scheduling will move things around, and register allocation will have a big mess to register allocate. And we found experimentally that it's much better to tell the compiler uh, you just have big operands until after register allocation. And after register allocation, we, we may split or we, we don't split them. If we don't split them, 
we still have a partial instruction bundles in the output templates, but given the scheduling feature of that machine, we did not uh, lose any kind of performance. And, and to conclude <coughs> on the generic approach, uh, we have to uh, compile for a lot of code coming from other sources, from ARM, from uh, x86. And so uh, we complement a compiler with two things. One is, uh, is a SLIF uh, library, which implements vectorized variant of, uh, of all the LibM. And then the SCMD project, which is very useful because it translates between uh, major ISA built-ins uh, type and function uh, to plain C, or you can optimize your translation. So here we see an optimized translation uh, back to the uh, uh, built-ins of our architecture. So this is a conditional uh, selection. And uh, uh, so either we fall back and SIMD vectorize, in fact, expand to uh, OpenMP SIMD uh, directive, so it says to vectorize the loop. Otherwise, you can call when you tune the translation. So. Uh, so, so in that case, you can have a, a, a machine that compile a lot of code and give a quite decent uh, performance results. Now I will go into uh, just a refresher of the control flow template and I illustrate them on the KVX uh, port. So uh, it's not very complex, but uh, it's mostly the same for all uh, similar architecture. I mean, architectures that do not have condition codes, but can uh, uh, compare and test a general purpose register, which is okay because we are vector scale architecture. So the first uh, template, so this is uh, the output of uh, MD dump. So MD dump, so you, you uh, uh, undo all the factoring you have in the MD file, so it's quite uh, easier to understand. So the first one explains what you do to uh, create a, a Boolean value, a, a store flag value out of a, a, a comparison. And it's, uh, it's, um, a set of uh, you compare operator and, and you send to destination. Then you have the main way to represent uh, conditional jump in GCC. You have uh, if then else uh, expression that uh, rely on the output of a compare operator and we select between the PC, which will be the next one, or give, give a label. So you see a set of if then else of PC. So these are the two ways you can control any kind of branching, and this is the way it works for most machines. Now, if you want to do conditional moves, conditional moves are quite uh, useful. You, uh, the first one who, who used them a lot was the uh, DEC Alpha machine, and the first compiler to use them uh, extensively was the GEM compiler in the 90s. So a conditional move is interesting because it can be represented in two different ways in a GCC infrastructure. One way is, uh, again, if then else, just like the branch, but you, you uh, assign to, uh, to something and, and, uh, and not to the PC. And another thing to, uh, this, to, to see is that you can compare any type with any uh, kind of construct or restriction to select another kind of data. So this is a here standard integer, and I, here I uh, a conditional move uh, double precision floating point. But this is uh, the basic conditional move uh, when not doing uh, advanced if conversion. When you run the if conversion framework in GCC, it goes into another construct, which is called conexec. So conexec also works to uh, describe uh, anything of a conditional, or I should say predicated execution. But when you apply it to conditional move, or when you have to do conditional move later in the compiler, which is in, uh, in our case, it's a different construct. Conexec says, I, I, I see the output of a test expression, just like this one, but now what I will conexec is the complete pattern of an instruction. So here is just a pattern of moving data. And so if you apply that to move, you have the two forms of conditional moves, and, and the two uh, must uh, appear in the compiler at, at some point. Now, what we have in uh, Calway is conditional uh, load and stores. And um, uh, we, we see again examples here. So because it's conditional, it's a kind of predicated uh, execution. Uh, here we see uh, what's happened with the load and the store. In both cases, you, you can only do that with a condexec uh, construct. So this is one uh, we, we have on Calway. And uh, one thing that will be uh, interesting afterward is that 
instead of having a, a predicate on the operand, which is just a general memory operand, we have something we call the mem simple uh, predicate here, which is explained here. It's a memory operand, which is either the referencing a pointer or, or is restricted to a simple addressing mode that is base register plus immediate offset, which can be quite big in our case. But this is different from the general case where you can have uh, index uh, addressing or index uh, scale addressing. This one exists uh, in non-predicated form. In predicated form, you can only do that one. And this is one of the uh, things we will have to deal with when we do if conversion. And, and it's not just Calray. For example, the FRV architecture, which is another one doing if conversion GCC, has the same uh, kind of constraints. Now, a quick summary of, uh, of the uh, uh, GCC framework for if conversion. Uh, so, um, when you, the framework for if conversion of GCC uh, is based on the, the condexec uh, construct when you deal with uh, predica fully predicated machines. So, uh, in that case, you would have to uh, write, in, in many cases, a lot of patterns for the regular execution, and then a big bunch of patterns explaining, uh, ex uh, exposing the case where you conditionally execute, that is, you predicate this instruction. When you have all your eyes there to predicate, it's quite heavy. So there is a mechanism uh, in a GCC called uh, define condexec, and define condexec, you just provide the uh, uh, kind of test that can be uh, applied to a conditional execution. Then you provide a piece of the uh, output template syntax. So this is the one we would use, for instance, for, for Calray, even though we will not be using it at Calray. Then if you have, have a, a fake move instruction here, so I describe the fake move instruction here, and I add uh, an attribute saying it's predicable. So when you have the predicable attribute, then the RTL expansion will say, oh, I will take this pattern and wrap it into a conde exec so you don't have to duplicate all your writing. So this is the, the basic uh, uh, infrastructure you have to uh, describe your conditional execution pattern in GCC. So now how does, uh, uh, how does the if conversion work in the GCC? In fact, it uh, has uh, three main paces and it's called uh, C1, conditional execution. So C1, C2, C3. Uh, C1 is uh, before combined. Uh, C2 is uh, after uh, combined. And uh, uh, C3 is after reload. So in, both, in, in the two first case, we have uh, pseudo registers. In the last case, we don't have, uh, only have uh, architectural uh, uh, hardware hard registers. And uh, so it's a fairly, so I, I just give a summary of the top uh, down structure because after I will explain where the target hooks uh, do something particular for, for or, or KVX support. So we just take the role function, iterate a, a, a find a if header that will return to you the header of a candidate basic block region. So it will be the test the, the, top lo the topmost test of the region in general. And then uh, when it iterates until it gets null, and, and when, whenever it sees that someone has changed uh, the, the, uh, con the uh, data flow somewhere, it uh, redoes uh, the DF uh, analysis to be sure that uh, it's up to date. So it's a quite uh, uh, understandable uh, top level driver. Now the find uh, if header, uh, again, it's running uh, C1, C2, C3, but uh, it is here where you have, we have the first target hook, uh, if uh, CVT MACDEP in it. So this is where you will uh, put all the control to exploit uh, um, the if conversion for your port, and this is the main one. <clears throat> so, uh, and, and, for you, and, and once you have done uh, that, you see that the, the code path is quite different whether you are before or after reload. So we can say that uh, the machine uh, will uh, work before or after, but it will be most, in most cases exclusive. So they will do a conditional move or no conditional execution only, or they will do mostly uh, predicated execution uh, uh, in C3. And um, 
this uh, uh, targeting of a work in a before after register allocation is based on the relayed completed, but also the return of the uh, half conditional execution. And the half conditional execution is a target uh, hook where the documentation says don't do it unless you're doing multiple mode execution like a sum, uh, arm sum. But in fact, by default, it will return half conditional execution. And the half conditional execution, it, it's built automatically uh, when uh, the compiler compiles the pattern and see the code exec uh, template. So this is the uh, top level uh, function. Now, if we go to the no C find if block, it means no conditional execution. It means we'll do only uh, tricks with control flow by looking at dead values on some pass, or we'll uh, use a, a classic uh, conditional move with the form I, I, I displays with the if then else of the value and not the con exec template. So you see that uh, it does uh, basically uh, filling info of the if conversion block try to uh, process in simple way. If it doesn't work, uh, try to process using conditional move. So this is exactly from the source uh, if cvt.c in the compiler, and the, the uh, commentary explains exactly what you're supposed to do. So we are here, uh, no C, so it's a before uh, 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 reload, before register location. Now we are in the other branch of the if conversion. We are after register allocation, and um, we will try to apply the compiler. We'll try to, uh, to do conditional execution that is predicated execution on, on the machine it was uh, designed for. So here it will go in, into more work. It will fir first find to see if the region is, is more than if than else. Is that uh, an end or, or kind of constructs? And we have a lot of branches and, and the uh, uh, we have a common else block or common uh, 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 Zen block, depending if it's uh, an end or, or or. And if it doesn't work, just go back to a, a region which are if then else, and then go to a, a lower level function that go, that will try really to uh, conditionally execute uh, the uh, if uh, conversion region. And so what it does here is that the top level function will uh, try to find in the, if on the different branch of the if then else, you have a common head and common tail, so, so as not to if convert them, because it would be useless. And then the core, which is different between the, uh, the then and else, for instance, will, will be passed to the lower level function, uh, which is uh, called um, uh, process uh, instruction. And now we have the uh, process instruction here from start to end, that is f the part which are not in common is uh, within, within uh, if, uh, Sorry, the Zen and else branch. And then what it does, it uh, tr try to build a pattern using a cond exec and a test or the complement of the test depending on the branch and try to see if that is recognized as a valid uh, 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 instruction template. But before uh, validating the change, if it's a valid template, it just hand over to uh, another uh, target uh, hook, which is called if convert modify instruction. And this target hook can decide, uh, I accept the new pattern, I change the pattern, or I, or I reject the, the if conversion by returning null into this uh, pattern. So this is uh, the second main hook we have to, uh, to go for the if conversion. So the, the first was initialization done in CE1, CE2, CE3, and the other one. Uh, is uh, modify instruction only happen in C3 after register location when you really try to use conditional execution with cond exec pattern. Now, how are we going to extend that for our uh, target uh, architecture? We have a set of objectives and we have a set of uh, constraints. So first, uh, if conversion, there are many variants of, of it, but the, the most important one would say is what happened during uh, vectorization or auto vectorization. So you can vectorize by hand, you can use uh, uh, a different kind of uh, conditional move, uh, select, uh, uh, merge, whatever, by hand, or the compiler can do it. So we are not going to compete against that. It's a very effective way. Then after, 
what doesn't come through a, a manual or, or automatic vectorization, it can uh, fall into a few standard pattern names that you can uh, implement. In that case, you will have some form of if conversion. So the most important one is the move uh, mode uh, CC, means conditional. So it's uh, called even for vector and for scalar uh, altogether. But it doesn't catch everything for a reason that I don't understand. And you also have other uh, more scalar oriented patterns where in fact it's a gimple optimization that prepares the if conversion. You don't have to go into the uh, if conversion uh, uh, at the RTL. So we want to complement that. So in fact, you are working for Scala uh, if, if conversion for the opportunities that were missed by earlier uh, mechanism. And also we constrain ourselves uh, at Carway. We never change the target independent part of, of GCC. Uh, maybe it's uh, too much of a constraint, but, but we can work uh, with that uh, until now. Now, what are the uh, objectives we are going to, to, to aim for? We would like to, to uh, predicate uh, conditional, uh, we would like to predicate load and store, which have a restricted addressing mode in case of a predication, which is the case because of a coding constraint on most machines that do partial uh, predication of instruction set. So it will not work if you have a complex addressing mode and the if uh, conversion does a cond exec and of, uh, and of course it's not recognized. So first we want to work around that. Then we see that in, in uh, several cases, there are simple instructions uh, where you can uh, pseudo predicate them. This is, so that is, you execute them, assuming there are no side effect, but the result go into a temporary register, and then you just conditionally move the temporary register. So in that case, you can extend the, uh, the uh, regions that you could uh, if convert. And last, we uh, also uh, try to do speculative execution of instruction for spe speculative execution when you are in a if or else, in a then or else branch, and you see you only compute local value. They are not used elsewhere. They, are, they don't have a uh, side effect. So you don't wait to pay the price of a pseudo predication with a conditional move. You just want to uh, compute this instruction uh, in its uh, target register and enable that in the if conversion. But in general, it, it should not work, and the compiler doesn't do that by default. So. Uh, now, the constraint we have is that uh, this work in C3 after register allocation. So, uh, what we do, we have to prepare work before register allocation. Register allocation does a lot of things, and then we have to uh, recover the pieces and, and, uh, and work after register allocation. Uh, the, the, the main reason for that is not a weakness of GCC, it's because the state of the art for register allocation. Uh, with a predicated instruction. Uh, it's uh, very complex and it's uh, not mainstream. Uh, basically, the live range escape uh, the definition, which are not a f uh, kill definition. So you have to analyze uh, your, your graph of values, uh, the webs, and put pseudo kills uh, and to constraint. So it's a hard, uh, we did that at ST Micro. It's hard to have a, a chain Briggs allocator hack. Uh, uh, to, to manage uh, conditional uh, definitions. So it's a uh, Kalan Koblenz in, in uh, GCC, but it would be the same. So it's a big simplification to do the predication after uh, register allocation. Now, uh, there are two ways to do that. One is the FRV way. Uh, try to scavenge, you use uh, hard register, live uh, range holes, and work with them. Or we can prepare uh, the work that we try to do here, uh, and then have register allocation, allocate variables, and then when we put the conditional uh, with pseudo predication or speculation, we don't break anything, and it's more tricky than uh, it would seem at first. So, uh, in fact, the modifications are, are not very extensive to GCC. Uh, first, there is a top-level control, which is the max conditional execute. So it's uh, just a cost of how many instructions in each branch are worth uh, converting to, uh, uh, to, to a conditional execution. So uh, currently, we have a, a big number because we are pushing the uh, uh, optimization to its limits in, in validation. Then, like I mentioned earlier, we have the uh, MACDEP init, which is called in C1, C2, C3. And then at the end of CE3, when everything is okay uh, for if converting the region by, by condexec, then you call the uh, if CVT modify instruction. 
And uh, we also have the target, uh, have conditional execution switch, which is used in various places. So in fact, we do not uh, use uh, the default implementation. So it's a very simple explanation. So uh, we have a big uh, max conditional execute. In the uh, MACDEP init uh, macro, uh, we capture internal variable uh, uh, of, uh, of the if converter of GCC, which is before or after combined, because it's internal variables that we can uh, get access to from this uh, hook. Then for the modify instruction, we return the pattern. It's a macro, but we return the, the result of the function. And finally, we implement a non-default have a conditional execution where it says uh, it's a reload uh, completed. So uh, in C1, C2, it will say, oh, I don't have uh, uh, predicated, so we'll do all the stuff for, for uh, non-conditional execution and conditional move only. And that after restore location, you say, oh, I have a fully predicated machine, let's go. So it's a very simple uh, uh, change. So um, I will summarize the code. I hope there is too much, not too much code. So uh, the main thing is that we, comp we set a global variable called uh, if uh, CVT C level, are we in C1, C2, C3? Okay, that's the main part. And then uh, in C1, uh, C, C3, we do nothing. In C2, uh, we do all the preparation work for C3, that will come later, but also we take care that normal uh, C1 and C2 are, are not uh, uh, preventing from doing the uh, normal work. And, and then uh, we, um, we find the candidate for C3, it's called uh, uh, C2 find, find candidate for C3. So find candidate for C3 goes into the candidate blocks and does things like uh, do I have too many instructions? Do I have side effect? Uh, I have a, do I have a, complete, uh, a complex uh, set statement? Uh, no, no, no. And then I branch into four cases. One is uh, I do conditional move. And then if I have a, a mem, I try to uh, do a conditional uh, mem. And if not, I must be in arithmetic, including the ones that were rejected in the conditional move uh, normal form. And then I will try either to speculate or to do the pseudo conditional execution. So uh, another part is uh, I, on those four functions, I, I only uh, give uh, extract from the uh, conditional mem execution because uh, all the other are more or less subset of that one. So it looks complex, but what it does is say, uh, do I have a zero extension or not? Uh, then uh, it doesn't matter for, for conversion, but I want to, to get that. Uh, do, do I have um, a, real, a simple load and store? Okay, easy. And then do I have, so this is a predicate, so just in predicate.md, but we, we call it here. And it says, do, do I have a simple memory operand that is only a base or base plus offset, or do I, do I have the general memory operand? And I have, if I have a simple memory operand, I do a wrapping of uh, this uh, pattern into a parallel with uh, one, the original pattern, and two, a clover of a pseudo register to have some re register space to work uh, with uh, later. And then I put into a table uh, this uh, instruction because I will reuse in case I, I want really to, uh, uh, if convert, I will re reuse this uh, pattern. And then I go into recognition, I recognize uh, this way, either the original one or the one with wrapping uh, with a, a parallel, and, and, and I go. Now I've prepared my block, now I'm back to the main initialization part, and uh, now the job is uh, I want to uh, have my live range handy when I will be after register location. In FRV, for instance, they do not uh, try to instance just the register used in the test condition. So depending on the, uh, what happened uh, with register location, the operand may or may not be available after register location because the register has been reused. Here, we just first uh, pull the live range. This is not in pseudo code, but that's the first step here. And then after, we want to make sure that 
we will have pseudo predication and, and speculated instructions that we have <coughs> real register definition of register location. Uh, we don't want those uh, real definition to kill useful full value. And in fact, it's quite uh, of an uh, of, uh, extensive uh, check to do. And so uh, what we do is that we uh, pull the, the live range, we introduce uh, pseudo def, and we uh, introduce use in the test block in the joint block, and so we will have uh, interference with the value going on the other branch of the what we are going to uh, uh, pseudo predicate, and we have the uh, value still available in the hard register. And um, for the speculative instruction, we don't have the scratch register and, 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 and space, but we have uh, we need to do some something else. We first need to put a flag to say later, don't put a cond exec around this pattern. So currently, I'm not very satisfied with what we do, but I just attach a, a reg non-negative note to the instruction, so it will be carried around. Non-neg note is usually it's only meant to uh, to help with the mapping of do loops. Uh, on some architecture, but, but it is not needed in architecture. So it's a note which is very harmless, and we can carry it uh, around. Uh, we could do a parallel with another useless or, or, or inspect instruction, but currently we do with uh, the uh, non-reg note. So we just flag those, saying, uh, don't uh, if put the condexet around them later. And also we say um, uh, the destination register uh, we extend the live range because we don't want uh, again that it uh, will mess around with the value carried by, by other uh, paths of the control flow. And, 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 and finally, the other, uh, so we are finished with the first target hook. The second target hook is the uh, if convert modify instruction. And this is where we see in action that we get the pattern and given by, by the, uh, uh, the uh, if convert of GCC, we got, have the odd pattern. First, we see is that uh, things we introduce to extend the live range. We, we just uh, don't care about it. Uh, it will be removed later. And then, uh, if we have a flag of uh, uh, it's uh, speculated, don't uh, put uh, the cond exec. So, in fact, do not uh, get the pattern from here, but return the old pattern. Now, we are, we are finished with the C part, and there will be a couple slides on the uh, uh, templates. So we have the templates for the road store with a, a simple addressing mode. So this one will be wrapped with condexact and will work out of the box. Now what happens if the if converter in C3 comes and, and will wrap uh, an instruction which has uh, the gen general addressing mode? It will not work. So the pattern we supply is a wrapping like I was described with a set and a clobber, currently we could wrap with another things and a clobber, but that's the idea. And then it uh, just uh, rely on splitting to produce uh, a variant where we have computed the effective address in the, in the scratch register, and then uh, fall back to the simpler condexed template, which is recognized by default uh, in, the, in our description. But then later, at the end, if uh, we could uh, if convert, we have to undo this wrapping. So we have another family of patterns that undo the wrapping we did to prepare for pseudo uh, uh, predication. So you have the example here. For the stores, is the same. Uh, for the loads I mentioned, we have to duplicate all that for the uh, small uh, size load uh, with a zero and, and, and sign extension. For the, for the uh, arithmetics, it's a little bit uh, different because we don't have to, uh, uh, no, sorry, it's, on, on this part, it's uh, mostly uh, the same. And so we, we degrade the, uh, the computation into uh, computing into the scratch uh, register and, and, um, and conditionally executing. Donc, so, so we have this, uh, we have the, we have the, the uh, effect of a pseudo uh, predi predication here. And again, we have a, a companion pattern to undo the wrapping with parallel that was done before. You don't see parallel here because it's a defined uh, ENSN and it has an implicit parallel over it, but that's the same idea. And, and then we are finished. Uh, we just uh, have to take care of the cleanup. And the cleanup, what we have to do, 
First, we uh, eliminate all the remaining uh, pseudo def uh, we introduce. The pseudo use are not uh, concerned, so we just uh, uh, split them into uh, use. And then uh, uh, we have to be sure that uh, this uh, last uh, splitting is done before uh, the machine dependent reorg. And for us, machine dependent reorg, the key is a uh, do loop optimization and the uh, schedule, which does uh, scheduling and bundling. So we do that. So these are the, the, the key part of the uh, if conversion. Now, <clears throat> what do we get uh, as a result? So we have a simple case here, and uh, we see <clears throat> we have uh, an instruction. Uh, we want to predicate. We have something that will be conditional move, and we have uh, something where we have to compute uh, something from a load, and then uh, use that as an, as an address. And so we run the uh, optimization, and it says conditional moves uh, number 14, uh, sorry, me conditional memory, conditional move, uh, memory arithmetic, which is speculative, not conditional, and, and do the uh, conditional mem. So these are the uh, instruction numbers that you can find here with the DP uh, output uh, of assembly code. So this explains, but most interesting is what happened. With, uh, this is without the if conversion, this is before. And we, you see the conditional branch here. It goes here or it uh, falls through. After we have that, so we have a more parallel execution. And uh, we have the simple uh, predication in green. And we have the pseudo predication uh, of conditional mem here. So you see, uh, we cannot do um, complex addressing mode. So we have uh, add a scale by eight to uh, compute the effective address, and it goes into here. Uh, same for this load, it goes R5, it's uh, called here. So uh, the pseudo predication has created additional computation. Speculative arithmetic is as is, there is no overhead, and this is a plain conditional uh, uh, load that didn't need uh, pseudo predication, it's directly supported by the ISA. So uh, I have other example, but I uh, will go quick. Now, even though I, I mentioned it's not for vector loops, uh, our, our real goal is, the, is to pipeline uh, scar uh, loops with uh, while, uh, while conditions, with conditionals, and by using um, uh, non-trapping uh, memory accesses. So uh, you see that it uh, identifies uh, conditional arithmetic. Another case where I should mention that we have to compile by setting uh, ignore finite arithmetic and other flags, so it will pass, uh, has no side effect, speculate for floating point. But that's that a detail. Here, splitting conditional memory. Here, doing conditional arithmetic. This is interesting, we didn't see that before. So the, the multiply here will do uh, uh, in, in, a, uh, in a pseudo uh, conditional way in a pseudo predicated way, and then uh, you have the end here. So uh, to summarize, uh, we've been working and we implemented the SCARIF conversion for uh, a partially predicated uh, VLIW architecture, the KVX architecture. We believe this uh, architecture is not idiosyncratic. It has a, a lot of modern ideas, starting with vector scalar uh, in the, in the ISA. Uh, it's uh, uh, an illustration that uh, 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 classic VLIW as opposed to, to epic style of VLIW can be efficiently com compiled for. You don't need the full predication and the heavy weight on ISA encoding that comes uh, with it. Um, so if, and uh, it was a good uh, a return that the existing if conversion framework of GC was robust and, and, and configurable enough to accommodate those change. And uh, we activated before and after reload, as opposed to on most machines, only before or only after. Um, when we compare to what uh, previously existed, uh, first in the 90s, you've been a series of development for, for conditional moves, so that was Blixstein with the GEM compiler in 92, 91. Then was the RK algorithm uh, by Schlansker and the, uh, another algorithm by, by Jesse Fang at Intel, uh, both for the IS64. We use those uh, algorithm. I use them myself in a previous uh, ST chips. That was fully predicated, and this is after we decide we will not do full predication on the carry machine. 
and uh, the original uh, support for uh, compiler support for, for predicated, uh, partially predicated machines, that is the trust um, uh, machine in the multiflow compiler was uh, done by Steph Stefan Frodenberger. So he was a colleague of mine when we were working on the, on the LX ST200 compiler at ST Micro. And, uh, and then you have the SSA form uh, of if conversion, so you need extension to uh, SSA form, or you need special handling of out of SSA uh, when you want to have the uh, uh, conditional execution seen at, at level of SSA form. But uh, I, I don't uh, know of compiler uh, using that uh, currently. And the, another category is uh, after register location. And I would say uh, uh, GCC shines uh, with regard to what exists uh, for uh, after return allocation. And it's a working in uh, IS64, CC6, F FRV, and marginally for other targets like uh, ARC and the ARM uh, RR32. And then we, we could add to the list uh, KVX uh, if we ever happen to be upstream, which we would like to. Now, the key feature of the work is that we've introduced uh, pseudo predication and uh, local uh, speculative execution, and all that uh, works after register location. The key part, uh, which is uh, central correct to correctness, is to be sure that every computation we do on scratch register or on local register in case of speculation will not uh, clobber values which are supposed uh, to be carried around when the control flow was there. And that was a tricky part uh, to, to get uh, right. And uh, if we compare to a machine that has a port mostly similar, the F FRV also have a restriction on the addressing mode uh, when they uh, predicate them. And uh, they, do, uh, they have a very complex machinery, which is more complex in the uh, 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 lines of source code than what we did uh, to uh, uh, recover all the unused uh, part of hard register they could uh, uh, put to profit to compute uh, the effective address. And they also forget to extend the live range of the register used in, the, in, in branch. So in most cases, it has been reallocated. It's no, no longer available. <coughs> so for the next step, um, we, it's uh, too bad we cannot reuse the uh, defined condexec machinery. This is very uh, useful, but it can only work if uh, you have a real uh, instruction, uh, defined instruction patterns. If you have a defined instruction and split, like we need currently for the uh, pseudo predication, then uh, it cannot apply, at least to my knowledge. So. Uh, we did most of the pattern you, you, you saw in extract by hand, but next step is that we will uh, script the output of, of, uh, of the MD dump and, 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 uh, and see an attribute and then uh, uh, create uh, the uh, pseudo predicate uh, template for it. And to conclude, uh, this is mostly targeted to uh, Scala loops and pipelining of Scala loops of while loops. And so uh, we'll have a lot of uh, first uh, uh, complete the pipelining of uh, while loops uh, with the uh, non-trapping loads and, and then uh, have this as an en enabler. And then we'll see exactly uh, how, how we tune the, uh, in particular, the size of the uh, if conversion code. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so my question is, uh, I know that it, in the last couple of years we haven't seen this architecture that much, the VLIW, and it's notable for being very hard to write compilers for. Uh, we have seen before some failures on the Intel side, on AMD side, <coughs> with Xeon Phi, TerraScale. My question is, have you done some performance uh, benchmarking on this compared to a traditional CPU design, GPU, where it stands? Yes, of course. <clears throat> so we compare a lot uh, for compute uh, benchmark against uh, ARM and x86. So with the current compiler, we see that, that uh, if we have the same clock cycle, that is, uh, let's say, one gigahertz, uh, we, are, we take uh, between uh, three, three and, and nine more clock cycles than the equivalent code compiled with the same uh, uh, compiler with GCC of LLVM of the same maturity. So, but we have a, a much simpler implementation. So, uh, and this uh, uh, derating of uh, X3 
this is uh, compared to uh, x86 and Ryzen uh, kind of machine, AMD uh, Ryzen. Uh, compared to uh, uh, advanced uh, ARM architecture at clock cycle, we are twice uh, uh, less efficient. So it will take uh, twice the amount of clock cycle. So this is the general result we see after uh, using a, a, a wide range of uh, numerical image and signal processing uh, application running on those because our, cost, our, our customer come with, I want to have lost this computation. And, and uh, so we have many core, we consume less, we have uh, less silicon. And in most cases, uh, we, we uh, make for the uh, time two or time three the rating uh, by the number of cores. Hi, thank you for the presentation, very interesting. Have you done any extra optimization before the if conversion to favorize uh, your uh, predication? So I'm thinking like three com um, conversions, um, three modifications to make your, uh, <coughs> let's say, predication kick in more often. Um, in fact, we've seen other things. We've seen, for instance, that that was one of the motivation uh, of this work. We had to disable uh, tree thinking mm -hmm. at the Gimple level because it will uh, remove opportunities uh, for the conditional move optimization, the default one. So we didn't want to have this drawback. So our objective was whatever is done before, we don't want to uh, meddle around with the uh, optimization. We take the code as is and we try to improve uh, w with what we have. So we, we don't change uh, code uh, upstream. Okay, so I think no other questions. So thank you for, for your presentation and, and that's all. Thank you.